This circular slider doesn't just look tasty, but also seems like the perfect way to showcase your products that just so happen to be circular in shape. And I will teach you how you can build it yourself using only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's break it down. I will start by identifying all of the different elements I can see on the page. First off, we can divide this into two parts, the top half with the changing text description and the bottom half with the slider itself. In this top half, we have a heading and a paragraph. There will be five sets of these, but obviously only one will be shown at a time. Then at the bottom, we have the five menu items or tabs, whatever you want to call them. The image container with all of the images inside, but with one shown at a time. And finally, this circular shape here with the small indicator dot at the top. Let's start creating all of them with HTML. In my project folder, I have an HTML, CSS and JavaScript file, as well as a folder I named IMG for the images. You can find the images in the description of the video. Now we will start by creating the main container of the whole slider and adding the different titles of each cake. Next to that goes the slider with the indicator, menu and image container inside. Inside the menu we add the five different menu options. And in the images container we add our cake and pie images. And lastly, I will add the descriptions for each of these treats that I generated with ChatGPT because my copywriting skills are weak at best. And that's it. Now for our goals in CSS. The first one would be to choose and show the default cake image and description while hiding the rest. Then we apply some basic cosmetic styles to the page, position and size our image and indicator, and position the menu tabs which will be done by simply creating a circle shape with the text on top and then we rotate each menu tab to the desired position as shown in this animation. Now let's move to the CSS and do it for real. We start with some basic reset styles and setting up the main container default background colour, sizing, padding and so on. Then we hide all of the images and descriptions, except the one that we choose as the default. I will go with the third one. I use opacity to hide the images, because I want them to appear with a smooth transition, instead of showing up instantly. After that, we style the text elements on the page and position the slider at the bottom center. Making the slider responsive is of great importance, so the way we will do this is by setting the slider width to be a fraction of the page width, in this case about 70%. Then we use that same value for the height to keep the aspect ratio of the slider as it changes in size. We also don't want the slider to grow too large, so I will add a maximum width and height of 600 pixels. This will stop the slider from expanding beyond this size as the screen stretches out. So you will see me do this multiple times in the next few code blocks. The concept is the same. We are just going to be sizing and positioning a bunch of elements in the next minute or so. See you in a bit.
Now we can start rotating the menu items into place. As you can see, we also need to keep the translate values that were assigned beforehand so that the menu item remains in the same place after being rotated. You don't really need to write this for the third menu item. Rotating by zero degrees does nothing. I just keep it for reference, but it is not mandatory whatsoever. You will notice that half of the slider overflows the bottom of the main container. If this is something you don't want, and you need it to be cut off and contained within our section, you need to set the overflow of the main container to hidden. However, this is still not enough. You also need to set the position of the main container to relative. This positions any absolute positioned elements within the relative positioned container instead of the whole page. Now the bottom half of the slider is hidden and we got rid of the scrolling space. One final adjustment I will do is I will move the slider a bit upwards on smaller screens. And with that, we are done with the CSS. In JavaScript, we will need to do a lot of things when a slider menu item is clicked, like changing the description, background gradient, changing the image and adding the rotation animations. If we move in closer, you will notice that the rotation doesn't just move directly to the clicked position. It also does this small counter rotation in the opposite direction before rotating to its actual target. Let's see how we can develop all of this interactivity from scratch. We will start by getting all of the needed elements from the DOM. Pay attention to where we are using Query Selector to select one element and Query Selector All to select multiple sibling elements. Then we will create some arrays. The first one will contain all of the rotation degree values for the indicator. You might remember that we already used these a moment ago to position the menu items in the CSS. The second one will contain the background gradients for each cake. Then we loop through the menu items. The first parameter is the singular name for each element in the loop, while the second serves as the loop index. We will add a click event to each menu item. Inside that, we loop through all images and set their opacity to zero to hide them. Then we only show the image that corresponds to the clicked menu items index. And now the images change accordingly. Think of it this way. At the beginning, we selected these three groups of elements using query selector all. Each group has five elements and every element has an index. The first element in the group has an index of zero, the second has an index of one, and so on. We loop through the menu items and retrieve the index value by setting the I parameter. Now this letter I can be added to any of the remaining groups to select and show the element with the corresponding index. So all we are doing is matching and showing the elements with the same index number and hiding all of the rest whenever a click event occurs. I repeat the same concept to set the corresponding gradient from the colors array. And I repeat it once more to show the corresponding description while hiding the rest. Now let's move on to the rotations. I will move above our loop and create a new function. This function will be used whenever we need to rotate the image and indicator. We will add a parameter called rotation value, which serves as a placeholder until we use the function in our code and set a real degree number for the slider to rotate to. Not to be confused with the array named rotation values. Now we can go back inside our loop and use the function we have created, repeating the same concept as before. Now when we click a menu item, the slider will rotate to the corresponding degree from the rotation values array we created at the top. This almost looks like the final version. We are very close to completing this project. 
All that is left is to set up the counter rotation, which we start by creating a variable that tracks the index of the currently selected cake. I've set it equal to two because I have chosen the third cake as the default one. Remember that arrays start from zero and not one. Then we have to set an if statement in order to decide in which direction the counter rotation should move. In simple terms, what we do here is check if the next cake we click on is to the right or to the left of the currently selected cake. If it is to the right, we rotate to the left and vice versa. And then at the bottom, we set the item index to be the same number as the index of the current cake. Here is a quick breakdown. At the start, the item index variable is set to two. Below, you can also see the index of each menu item. If I click on the blueberry cake menu item, which has an index of three, that is obviously greater than two, so the rotation will start from the current position and rotate to the left by 10 degrees. After which the real animation will kick in and rotate back to the blueberry cake I clicked on. You can also see how the item index variable updates after each click. So now it is equal to three, which is the index of the cake we clicked on. And now let's say I click on the strawberry cake, which has an index of one. That is less than three, so the counter will now rotate to the right by 10 degrees and then move to the strawberry menu item. And at the very end, the item index updates to one, allowing us to compare the current menu item to the next one we click, and so on. You will notice that we return nothing in the else statement, as it is good practice to do so in this case, where there is nothing to write inside of it. So that is the logic behind these mini counter rotations, but this won't work yet. The reason is because this initial rotation below cancels out the ones above it. To fix this, we simply delay the real rotation by 300 milliseconds, which is the transition duration we have set in the CSS previously, so make sure those numbers match. And now you should see everything work flawlessly. Congratulations on making it to the end. I hope you could keep up with the concepts I have explained here. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you wish to support the channel and gain access to the source code of some amazing projects, you can check out the first link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.